ladies and gentlemen, a very intelligent Irishman, a very charming Irishman, but literally every day of our lives, we are trying to beat this man for all of the money. Oh yeah. Head odds maker at FanDuel, the sports bookie book of FanDuel sports book, John Sheeran. Yeah. What's going on, John? Not a lot, Pat. That's certainly a big introduction. So I appreciate all, all the support. It's uh uh, it's exciting, for sure. Well, personally, I think you're a good guy. Professionally, though, I want you to lose terribly every single day. So it's I am kind of torn. And every time I see you talk on Hammer, Dad, you do fantastically. And you're rather transparent, which I don't think a lot of people are used to, especially when it comes to sports books, because it is, hey, you versus us. Ultimately, it's supposed to be gaming. It's in the gaming world. You're supposed to be playing against each other. So naturally, you're enemy, but good dude, so... We're, we're excited to talk, you know, talk to you right now. Thank you for joining us, John. Yeah, happy to be here, Pat. Look, historically, it's been an adversarial relationship, like you said. It's us against you. And I think Tone had a lot of doubts about me being transparent. He was like, I don't know whether to trust what you're telling me or doubt it. But it's good that I finally outgrown that show because uh, and this is the big time for sure. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Listen, Hammer Don did not deserve you that. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Sorry, Tom. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, it no, sure no, sounds like it's yeah. right. It's true. Yeah, no, no. I'm sure they. Hey, you, you, so you still go on Hammer Don, or no? You still won't. You won't go on Hammer Don anymore. You graduated, or what? I think I've graduated, Pat. After today, for sure. He Tone reached out to me a few months ago. He's like, we we should do a, uh, a section every week, and I was like, I'm more than happy to. And then I never heard from. Well, him football since. season. Oh! Oh! Football Dude. season ended. Football season ended. It was football. It was football. Yeah, yeah. Football. Anyways, they're, and they're also beating the dog shit out of you, I think, in the first half of MLB baseball, and they're enjoying all that. So they might not want to ruffle any feathers. Yeah. But anyways, your conversations with them have been so electrifying, which is why I'm excited to chat with you. Who do you know? What do you know about the first overall pick in the draft? Because this was startling numbers. We saw this literally as we woke up this morning on, on Friday. Okay, Aiden Hutchinson, minus 175 to go number one overall, has been the favorite to go number one overall by everybody since this entire draft season has begun. Minus 175, pretty good favorite, by the way. That's pretty good, feel pretty good about it. Trevon Walker, plus 165. Now we wake up this morning, Trevon Walker, minus 155 to go number one overall. Aiden Hutchinson now plus money to go number one overall. What the hell happened? Who do you know? And how is this information figured out and calculated in your end of this entire world? So just to the last point first, right, the hardest thing for us is to form a really strong opinion, have a lot of confidence in the market and the price that we offer on any of these selections. Um, the limits are reasonably low. Our confidence is equally low when it comes to being certain around what these positions will do and where certain teams will look to, Pat. So when we uh, initially launched this, this market back in March and added Trayvon Walker, he was 30 to 1 to be the number one pick in the draft this year. As you said, Hutchison's been a strong favorite since then. Uh, but overnight, we saw a real rush of really what I would say is respected money for uh, Trayvon Walker. And normally with these markets, when you see a rush of money like this, it tends to tell a bigger story than even the bets themselves. So I would pay a lot of respect to the idea that Trayvon Walker will be the first pick on Thursday. Who's respected money? I'm sorry, AJ was about to go there. Respected money is just because uh, they talk about sharks or, or sharps. I'm sorry. And in your eyes, you guys know who the sharps are. You have to know who the sharps are. It's like, ah, oh, these motherfuckers seem to know something more than anybody else. And you're watching, watching. And it's like, at what point do you have to balance that reaction to them? Is that always? Yeah, I think it's about knowing how strong your opinion is and how valid it is, Pat. In an NFL week, as I said to Tone on that secondary show that you have, uh, all season, all season long, uh, <laughs> all season long, you know, we're happy to stand up against the Sharps where we feel like we have an advantage, where we feel like we have a strong opinion and understand where they're coming from. The draft and the number one pick and what certain teams will do in certain spots is certainly not one of those position so like i said we'll pay more attention to the money that we see the information that we garner from those bets when they come in and to answer your question who the sharps are these are accounts that historically have proven over time that they're able to beat us and win money off us and that's effectively this type of money that we saw for trayvon walker last night oh you so obviously you have a very important position there Congrats, at FanDuel and what trayvon. you're doing like how do they safeguard against someone trying to come trying to corrupt you like come in there and try to blackmail you try to do anything to change all these lines because we know we, how much 
money is at stake here with especially what you're doing. Do you, just the CIA, you taking lie detector tests every month? Like, what's going on? Well, especially with some of those juicy, I oh, mean, yeah. some of the shit you've been giving out. Oh, Jeez. John. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was a job proposition from AJ first, and uh, we can talk about that <laughs> offline, AJ. Maybe that's the right way to tackle it. We'll do. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I uh, look. It's 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 important, right? Integrity is important to all of us. We have regulators that monitor this. We monitor ourselves from a financial perspective. But I guess what I'm saying in a roundabout way is, uh, for the price, I'm interested in anything you have to. Offer. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been doing this? How long have you been in the odds making game? Because it's not easy. Obviously, we we. Uh, I don't speak to, we all from certain areas had friends who ran books or somebody else that ran books. We've basically all known somebody to do it, but do it at the level that you have to do it right now. Biggest book in the world, I believe. Fandle Fand Sports oh, yeah. the biggest book in the world. You're the head odds maker. How long have you been doing this? And what is, how many of yous are there out there, you think? Like, do you have respect for other odds makers? Do you watch what some other people do? And you're like, uh, maybe we should do that. Is there only a few of yous you think out there? Yeah, look, I'm lucky. It's uh, it's obviously a good position to be in with a brand like FanDuel to be able to express the opinions that we have and not get heat every week when we lose money. So how long have I been doing it? I don't know, Pat, far too long. Longer than my Twitter handle will indicate how old I am, but uh, probably 15 to 20 years uh, doing this overall. Um, and in terms of respect, yeah, we got a ton of respect for a lot of operators out there. A lot of the books that take opinion of four markets uh, certainly a lot of respect for what they do. We pay attention to what they do as well to help inform the decisions that we make. Who sets the tone, you think, the most? Do, do you feel like you're a part of that? Cause, or does everybody else kind of, is it different? Like, do some bookmakers have a better read on baseball mm -hmm. and oh, uh, they better read on football at this department? Like, do you guys, do you think that's all kind of mutually understood amongst each other? Or is everybody trying to create their own line and they all just so happen to be pretty similar? A uh, really good question. I, I think we try to lead when it comes to odds making and want to back our own opinions. We want to build a team here across all of the core U.S. sports path that have a strong opinion, a valid one. And we want people in Vegas to look at what FanDuel are doing rather than the other way around. And that's what we started to do a good job with, I think, in football, the NFL and college and basketball, too. We've got a bit of work to do to catch up on the other two core sports, but certainly encouraged. And that's certainly the end, the end goal. So if you know anyone that's interested... I'd be sure to send them my way. All right. Okay. <laughs> I, by the way, we we don't know anybody as of right now, but no. the Hammer Don boys have been beating your guys' ass pretty good. Do you like? Do you keep track of that? You have to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the guys are doing an awesome job. The amount of people that reach out to me and say, like, what a great job Tone and Gumpino do and oh, all the boys. Man. Yeah. Is it too late Too late to go back now? Yeah. 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 To say sorry? Yeah, Bieber's just in town. He's on tour. Get tickets oh, yeah. where it is. But I do believe it's too late to say sorry. The first five in MLB that the boys are hitting on, is that that first half thing, I think, is what it's mm -hmm. called, right? Yeah. yeah. Do you monitor, like, hey, we're making good money oh, off yeah. of those. Those are a great bet. Is there bets on there that you get very worried about? Like, oh, these are tough to, to really set up, tough to do, because – FanDuel has so many fucking bets. I don't know how you guys, you know, can stay on top of all of them, John. That's 100% right, Pat. We can't. Like, there's a lot of opportunity there if you're selective, disciplined enough to pick out an edge that you might have and pound us on it. And I think the guys have done a good job with the first five. We have a new baseball model, so we're still learning <laughs> how it works. Uh, um, and the next time we're looking for a head MLB trader, I know where to go. <laughs> Gumpy, what do you got for John Sheeran? Anything sweet? Yeah, John, is there, can we get some more uh, footy super boosts on there? Some of the ones are just a uh, little <laughs> little bit outrageous. Maybe we get some some nice ones on there, huh? Yeah, 100%. You guys control those. So whatever you want, just shout, and we'd be happy to facilitate. <laughs> Smart. Well, that's great news. Smart. That's very good news. Um, did you guys lose your ass on Tyson Fury knocking out Dillian White? Because I enjoyed that so much. Specifically because he came on the show, he's obviously incredibly entertaining and awesome, and he talked about his dream outcome, right, would be, and he would his, I'd knock him out, and before he even hits the ground, I leave, I'm at the bar as they're announcing that I'm the winner. And at that point, we're like, 
Okay, so he is trying to knock this dude out for sure. You boosted that thing for us from minus 135 to plus 110. And I'm not saying that it felt like a lot of people took this bet, but Tyson Fury is very popular. And if any of the betting trends that you guys have shared with us uh, rang true for this particular fight, feels like this fight probably killed you guys a bit. Is that accurate? And what are the things that normally take you guys down? When a super favorite or a super popular does well, you guys just get fucking killed? Yeah, anything that Pat McAfee puts up that wins usually kills us. So this one certainly fit into that criteria. Honestly, though, like he's a, he's an easy guy to root for, right? So I think everybody was motivated to get in behind him. And honestly, I think that bit of insight you got from him directly in that interview around his motivation to knock him out, I think that's insight that we could never be aware of. So I actually think that you got a bit of value in the right price, and then we boosted it even further. So all in all, it was a pretty good steal, a, a good interview, like I said. Everybody is, is easy to roll in behind Fury, and uh, yeah, that was a pretty expensive one and made for a bit of a headache for me on Saturday evening, so I appreciate that. Hey, sorry about you not being able to sleep. Sorry about it. I slept soundly. Oh, yeah. I slept very, not as good as Dillian White. Oh. <laughs> All right, anyway, guys. John, as far as the NFL draft goes Thursday night, as far as handle and the amount of bets that will come in through FanDuel, how, like, is it typical to like an NFL playoff, to NBA finals? What's the handle like for the NFL draft, uh, and how has it changed over the years? Yeah, it's certainly getting bigger, Tone. What I would say is that the regulators are getting a little bit more comfortable allowing us to do more with the product. So we will, in New Jersey, for example, trade it live as the event is going on, but be three picks behind. So after the first pick, you can wager on the fifth pick and so on and so forth. So I think over time, you'll see oh. an evolution in how the product appears. We actually have like a version of Same Game Parlay where you, where you can parlay uh, three players to get picked in the top five and it'll uh, calculate that on the website as well so i think some good innovation some good focus but a key event for us particularly now we're getting to that stage in the season where everyone's baying for football to come back this is a good uh stop in the calendar and excited to see what it does this year can you explain to regulators a little bit because we obviously catch heat whenever mm -hmm. we promote something and it can't be in some state and i couldn't even imagine the amount of shit the FanDuel gets you as a whole you got to stay away from it but there's regulators in every single state and they are not the same it is not uniform it is not universal some places won't allow some boost some places won't allow like player specific boost or whatever do you feel like as a whole it's getting easier to work with everybody and how long do you think it is until the entire country is on board, even though that's probably way over your, your pay grade, if I had to guess. Thanks, Posh. Thanks for the vote of confidence. <laughs> I appreciate this. Oh, you're not a lobbyist. Uh, you're not a lobbyist, are you? I don't know. Yeah. Like, they I try to get me to do everything, including this show. So, uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> everything is in the realms of possibility. Um, look, you're right. It, it's really complex. It's difficult, difficult and different in every single state. Uh, we expect to be in probably 49 of the 50 states, Utah being the one that is going to be a challenge over the next decade or so. I think all of the regulators are at different stages in their comf comfort levels when it comes to sports betting. Uh, so it's just something that we continue to work closely with them. They've had a tough remit. They get handed down legislation and have to rule over it. But overall, I think people are all rowing in the same direction, Pat, and it's certainly getting better, but our footprint getting bigger causes more complex issues around what we can offer in certain states. But like I said, that's a certainly a work in progress yeah I, I just assumed you weren't out there being the lobbyist in all these states like ohio has to agree on it has to let it be out before january 2023 or whatever mm -hmm. so everybody's assuming like by football season in ohio would be off there but from what i've been told it's like it's not as easy as that like there is especially poli there's a bunch of politics involved basically everywhere and that's kind of where the regulators come in too because they're appointed by the politicians so it's like uh it's an interesting world right now we're kind of blazing a trail it feels like and you're a main part of that should feel good John, hey, yeah. you're so good. Look at you. Look at you. I, I appreciate the props. A bit like my um, headshot on your tweet earlier, Pat. They don't really like to send me public facing very often. I think I have a bit of a faith. A face for radio is what I was told a long time ago, and I, I fully bought in behind that. Well, we just wanted people to fully understand who we were talking to. We are talking mm -hmm. to the sports ball. That's right. Mm -hmm. That is literally who we're talking to. So, no offense to you. I mean, although it was a very vanilla cast today. Yeah, sure. Very, right. That would have been, you know what I mean? What we did think about was... <laughs> Hey, this is who we're talking to. We are talking to the sports book. So Makes it up. I hope you didn't take any offense to that. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, John, do you have a group chat with all the other uh, odds makers? And do you guys ever set lines that are just so wrong that you all feel like absolute clowns? And so you have to kind of, 
lean on each other a little. Like, for yes. instance, when the Brooklyn Nets came out as favorites to win the series against the Celtics, and then it immediately got flipped. <laughs> were you guys all just like, wow, we were a bunch of stooges? Or you just kind of realized that, you know, you guys were all wrong? Uh, that happens all the time. When you mentioned the WhatsApp group, I thought initially you were going to ask for an invite into it. You're more than welcome to join. I think it'd be pretty insightful to have you, some of you guys in there. Um, but yeah, we, we get this. I was going to say we get this shit all wrong all the time. It's you know really difficult. We like you like Pat said earlier. We have to price so many markets over so many different sports with the same people. You know we make plenty of mistakes for sure, but it's about learning from them and not repeating them as we move forward. I think. Did you say shit earlier? I think I might have. Don't wow. say that on the show, please. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. You got, I'm going to get relegated back to Hammer Down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, once again, Hammer Down. Jesus. Not yeah, great Get slaughtered. Show. Good show. Go ahead, John, Tone mentioned that you guys have a lot of markets for you know teams and like position specific where are you where guys are going to go have you seen a lot of bets come in on that and where do you have the most liability where you know like if a, outside of a quarterback getting picked by like the packers in the first round yeah good question we have a lot of markets particularly for the teams that are local to the areas that we're in so i'll give you one bit of insight the jets at pick 10 is something we're pretty interested in a wide receiver potentially somebody like J Jamison Williams to go there. That's one that we're trying to keep a little bit on side and uh, not trying to attract too much money on that. That's, That's so obviously... Hey, good spotlight. Uh, good spotlight on that. <laughs> there we go. Jamison uh, Williams to I, 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 I didn't say that. Uh, Thibodeau to go number two is certainly something that we've picked up a lot of uh, heat on. I think obviously massively dependent on what happens with the first pick in Jacksonville but uh, that's one that's certainly caught a lot of uh, a, a lot of money that's one of the biggest liabilities we have over the the, the three days hey li listen the people that maybe hadn't heard you on the great show that is hammered down <laughs> you normally don't lie about this type mm -hmm. of shit either because the natural thought here is oh he's telling us that to bamboozle us. Yeah, right really in. but he's not this guy he's not at all he's told the truth on hammered down numerous times much like at a high cost against FanDuel. Oh, yeah. He's Irish. He's too nice, this guy. You could, ask him, you could ask him tonight who he likes in the NBA for the playoffs, and he'll tell you exactly what side the book likes tonight. Yeah, who, who is the book very excited about this evening in this uh, NBA playoffs? Like, who can't win in your eyes? Um, I don't know that we have a strong opinion at all. Like, I think this is probably a game. Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't have a strong opinion tonight at all, to be honest. I think Dallas have done a really good job on Utah. Three is about right. Obviously, Luca coming back last week, the or last night with the performance that he did, I think is is strong, and and that's probably our favorite of the three, but not a strong, not a night for a strong opinion. So I'm not going down on that ship on the big show today. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I respect it, and I also like the fact that if you're just listening, you don't get to see him. He is clicking on things, and he's literally just pulling up yeah. entire markets yeah. right behind the screen right now. It is awesome to watch. Go ahead, Foxy. Yeah, John, that's why I wanted to ask you, what's the biggest sucker bet going right now? Because I've been taking these method of first basket <laughs> My money's gone at this point. Am I just an absolute sucker for that? Dude, plus 7,000. How do you not take it? God, I have, to. have to. How do you not? The, the only thing I would say to that, Foxy, is you don't need any help. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> you, you, found, you found it on your own. Honestly, markets like that, we've got so much over around in our favor. It's really, really difficult to even think about winning money over time. It's just a big, big challenge. <laughs> Hey, what's the hardest sport to handicap for you? Uh, I think for us, uh, baseball or hockey, AJ, it's just one that we don't have the experience that we do for the other ones, NBA and NFL. Part of the reason we feel so good about the product is we've been looking at it and trading it, pricing it for almost 20 years for the other brands internationally. It was super important to our brands in Australia, so we feel like we got a big jump on the industry with those two in particular. Uh, so the other two are ones that we're kind of learning, hiring a lot of local expertise. The trading team is built out to about 50 individuals here, and some of the guys are super smart, super enthusiastic, and have really good opinions, and that's what we want to encourage over time, I guess. Yeah, what, Nick gives out 45 hockey picks a night or whatever. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm Nick, trying. I'm coming for you, Johnny. Yeah, Nick knows it's a weakness over there. We've been winning, I yeah. think, a pretty yeah, good Yeah, there you go. Yeah, they don't know shit over there. About yeah, you guys don't know <laughs> shit Pens about are winning. Pens are winning the cup. They know that. Vegas Dave, obviously, he gives out locks as well. Yeah. I mean, that's that's obviously something. Gumpy has last question for you here, John. We appreciate your time. John, we've talked about this a few times. How much money are you guys about to take in if the Nets got, get knocked out tonight with the futures bets? 
Uh, yeah, we were pretty aggressive with the Nets with the mess this season between Harden and Kyrie and uh, obviously Durant failing a little bit or maybe a lot in the series is a big challenge. And every, Everybody still is willing to support him. He's such an incredible talent that it's not uh, well, unusual to see that and we've been raking in the cash uh, as he's failed badly and, and Jason Tatum has taken over. Yes, awesome. <laughs> I, I mean, oh, all yeah. right, John. We appreciate you. Congrats on your success. Okay, Congre- thank you, Pat. Congrats. I, I mean, it's fucking over. Literally, everybody yeah, else. Well, people. but congrats on your success, John. We appreciate you. You do a great job, man. You're an incredibly cool. Thank you for coming on our show, uh, making time to come on our show, as well as Hammer Don. Never another been. great show, John. Another great show. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Tony, when Pat's finished me, I'm happy to come back anytime. All right. John Sheeran, ladies and gentlemen. What a life. Heel. Good heel. Yeah. yeah. Great great delivery. Great heel. Try heel. We've been doing the NFL and the NBA for about 20 years, so we feel pretty comfortable about everything <laughs> over there because the yeah. overall organization, Flutter, owns, I think, Europe's biggest book and Australia's bigger, biggest book as well as FanDuel. So it's like... Uh, unreal. They've been doing it a long, long time. And in Europe, I think gambling was much more... Oh, exp- yeah, yeah. I think it was happening mm-hmm. at a much higher rate or whatever. Well, that, that's why it makes sense with, like, baseball, too, because, like, they... They have cricket over there, so they're not, you know, like everyone watches the uh, the NFL, but like they're they have they have their own baseball over there, so why would they be super sharp at it over here? So the first five, Gumpy's like, oh, welcome to America, the, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. the Canadian. Yeah. Welcome to the Thunderdome Hell of yeah. baseball, dude. He's a good guy. He is. Mm-hmm. I I've, you know, he. I tried to talk shit to the book, obviously. Like, this is competitive. Hey, I'm trying to take your money. I'm trying to beat you. Like, literally. That's because they don't own our show. So we are just partners. So it was meant to be that way. Like, hey, I'm trying to take every dollar still. So every win is a real genuine win from this company. We're looking to make all the money from this. And the book guy, you know, the head book, as soon as I met this dude, I'm like, oh, you're a super cool guy, man. All right, listen, you just got to do what you got to do, I guess. He's really smart, though. He's a good gambler. He is a good good gambler. gambler. Very good gambler. He gives out a lot of winners on Hammer Don. Yeah, kind of a massive prick to Hammer Don, but he is a good gambler. (laughs) And good to know that whenever the Super Boost hit, they are just getting absolutely wrong. Absolutely. I get a couple pie graphs every once in a while, or pie charts, whatever those are. Mm-hmm. Ooh, yeah. And it'll be from FanDuel. Hey, we just want to let you know what your boost just did. Okay? Mm, Congratulations. Okay. Hell yeah. Thank you so much. Is he ever off the clock? Like, that's a job I feel like you're never, he's, he's never done. Well, you got to deal with Europe too, right? So yeah. that's that. Uh, Six Jeez. hours ahead? Six mm-hmm. hour, yeah. I mean, like, in any kind of breaking news changes the lines. If a player goes down, all this stuff, like, you always have to be on top of it. Yeah, he probably just lives. His office is probably his house. Like, he probably just lives there, right? Yeah. Probably has a great office, though. Oh, uh, I great can imagine. Great mattress, too, I bet. Well, no, I bet you he has a full. Yeah, comes out nice height of bed. Water bed. Just like what AJ said, Ooh. probably a water bed. Yeah, probably like he's in the ocean. You know That'd be I mean? cool. But just like AJ said, like that is a, a position where, like if he was to leave, probably a lot of money to be made for him as well. So he has to. Mm-hmm. Like he warrants probably a pretty good life. Oh, because yeah. Because how much money is being wagered against him. At any given moment. Well, and you just talked about them like being on on it all the time. Think about the live uh, betting in New Jersey. Like if somebody goes second overall that they didn't think it was going to go second overall or whatever, and then they have to put up live odds for picks six, seven, like it's going to be insane. 